What do we say then when chaos is knocking at your door, yes, sir. my door? What shall we say then? So regardless of what come or what may, you have the assurance that it will work together for your good if you love God. We are living in interesting times. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Very interesting times. Yes, sir. There's, of course, a lot of commotion now with regard to who will sit in the White House next. There are concerns about where will the next rainstorm flood. There are concerns about where will the next major earthquake take place. And believe it or not, we just had one here in Colorado. So many things, so many things, so many things that are taking place. What do we do? What do we do? But I'll address your attention to familiar passage of scripture coming from Romans the eighth chapter. Beginning at the 28th verse. Bear with me, we will be going from verses 28 all the way through verse 39. What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? Fax Delta Gordon, if he would read these passages for us. And we know that all things work together for good yeah. to them that love God, mm -hmm. to them who are the called according to his purpose. Yes. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate yes, to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Yes. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Yes, sir. And why is that? Verse 32. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Doesn't cost us anything. Continue. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also make him intercession for us. Here's the question, verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or pearl, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, 
nor height, nor depth, nor any creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Yes, and this is where we find our confidence. And the thought that I'd like to leave with you today, regardless of what comes and what may go, what shall we say then to these things? Several months ago in the process of my devotion, the meditation, the Spirit of God spoke a word that drew my attention, and the word was chaos. The word was chaos. It's not one that you'll find from Genesis to Revelation, but the word was chaos. And I said, okay, what would you have me to know with this? He said, chaos shall come. Chaos, chaos shall come. And I took the moment to take a look because I knew I didn't have to look in the word of God, but we don't find the word chaos. But upon definition, I found complete disorder and confusion, which also includes disarray, disorganization, mayhem, bedlam, pandemonium, havoc, turmoil, tumult, commotion, disruption, upheaval, uproar, mess, anarchy, lawlessness. And in today's words, all hell broke loose. Chaos shall come. On this past Thursday, somewhere around 1.30 in the morning, from that point on, again, the word Lord came, chaos has come. Chaos. Chaos has come. Take a look at the conditions of the world as we speak and as we live right now, seen with our own eyes, as we witness. Chaos has come come. Now sometimes it's impersonal because it doesn't relate to us because we might find it in Louisiana, we might find it in Iowa, we might find it in California, we might find it in Italy, we might find it in Miramar, we might find it in Japan or some other place. But what do we say then when chaos is knocking at your door, my door? What shall we say then? At that moment, at that time, don't get it confused. We live in a spiritual world. Every single thing that we do is impacted by one aspect of the spirit world or the other. Every single day. Each and every one of us sitting here are in some type of relationship. Every one of us, from the youngest to the oldest, you are in some type of relationship. Now, how does Paul encourage us with one of the greatest books ever given to the New Testament church? And you have to understand how much God loves us so that in the wisdom and writing that he would give to Paul, that Paul was not in Rome delivering this to them. Paul was in current when he wrote this hand delivered by a woman that traveled 745 miles to give it to the people of Rome. Phoebe. So knowing that he was 745 miles away, how could Paul possibly know what was taking place and what was the need of the people, primarily Gentiles, in Rome? Because there was three things that Paul was trying to first and foremost establish. First was the way of salvation. As God had established it to be. Two was understanding the love of God in spite of Israel's rebellion against him. And the third was how to survive in a society in the day that they were living in. What do we say then to these things? 
Now the first thing that he establishes, we know. There's no question in our mind if you are a believer. This is not something that we have to second guess. He said, and we know that all things work together for good. Stop. Not for everybody, not for the general populace. There is a condition. There is a condition. To them that love God. So regardless of what come or what may, you have the assurance that it will work together for your good if you love God. And for those who are the call to make a request or demand by him to his purpose. And it says, for whom he did foreknow. Know beforehand. And that's each of us. He also did predestinate, but don't get this confused with the doctrine that's being taught in some places. Because predestined in this case means to foreordain to an earthly or eternal lot or destiny by divine decree. To be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Ezekiel 18 and 4, the first part says, Behold, all souls are mine. As the soul of the father, so also the soul of the son is mine. Jeremiah 1, 4, the first part, before I formed you in the belly, I knew you. And before you came forth out of the womb, I sanctified you. 2 Peter 3 and 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering to us, word, not willing that any should perish, but that all come to repentance. That's the predestination that God had established, that every living soul that he created would have his or her place in his kingdom. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them also he justified to prove or show to be just, right, or reasonable. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. He gave honor and praise to. It is contingent upon relationship. Someone has said that talk is one of the cheapest commodities there is. However, but talk is rich when you speak the word of God. And even more so when you speak it in faith, believing that it shall come to pass. So what shall you say then? Chaos is no longer coming. Chaos is here. That's right. That's right. In our communities, in our schools, in some of our homes, chaos, chaos is here on our jobs, in the streets, chaos is here. Relationship is to find the way in which two or more people, objects or concepts are connected, or the state of being connected. It ties in with relation of things affect on relevance to another, or to relate, to show or make a connection between two or more people or things as in association. So each of us, once again, are in some type of relationship. If you have a relationship with God, how do you know? It's not necessarily by what you just say, but it's more important by what you do. Many of us have learned the act of quoting scripture, but not living an ounce of it. Yeah. 
many of us. And the Lord is faithful and so loving and kind to us that he's still showing us, even right here in the Israelite Church of God in Christ, that he is still God, he is yet in control, and he is still able. He is still able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we can ask or think. According to the power that working in us and that power comes from our words and speaking that which he said in agreement with him what shall we say then there are too many saints nowadays that are complaining I don't know what's going to happen if Donald Trump gets elected. I don't know what's going to happen if Hillary Clinton gets elected. You have to have a concern either way because neither one are saved. And it doesn't matter whether you vote for one or the other. The question is, in whose report shall you believe? If it's one, guess what? All things will work together for good uh -huh. to them that love God. Those who are the called according to his purpose. So no matter what the outcome is going to be on that day or at that time, you can rejoice in the fact that all things will work together for our good. Because our benefits don't come from the government. Our benefits come from God. The White House belongs to the federal government, but I'm reminded of the scripture that says the earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell herein. Tell on a thousand hills belong unto him. Concerned about finances, I believe it said gold and silver are mine. Fort Knox doesn't even come close to the wealth that God has laid up. The wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. That's the word of the living God. What shall we say then? When all of a sudden you don't feel quite right in your body. You get a certain report from the doctor. And he says or she says you have this. And your time is limited. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Whose report will you believe? What shall you say then? Yeah. Will you agree with them or will you say by his stripes I am healed? Yeah. And in him I live, move, and have my being. Yes, I don't feel as strong as I used to be or as I should be. Well, just as the song went forth, let the weak say I am. You may not see a dollar in your wallet, but let the poor say I am. Why? For what the Lord is not going to do, but what he has already. Glory to God. What shall you say then? What shall you say then when you go to an employer and you turn around and read the qualifications and they say, you don't meet what we're looking for? Uh -huh. <laughs> what would you say then? What about trusting the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your, in uh, all whose ways? Your ways, acknowledge, and he shall do what? Amen. What shall you say then? What shall you say then? 
we have to understand that nothing is going to get better. You can't pray it to get better. Not the conditions of this world. For Jesus himself said, it shall wax worse and worse. So if we can't pray for the changing of the conditions of the world, what shall we say then? We should pray one for another and pray without ceasing. Because by the time everything is said and done, we must, shall, will need one another. The power of speech, the spoken word, was given to man from the foundation of creation. Out of all the things that God would graciously create, even to include the stars, multiple billions and trillions, however numbers there are, the word of God says he knows them all by name. And all the things that he would set in place upon the earth, one thing God relinquished his forethought to was naming the creatures on the earth. He gave that to Adam. And whatever Adam called them, to this very day. For that word was agreed upon forever settled in heaven as it is now, even upon the earth. So if it was good enough to speak it and God to agree then, how much more now for that which he says to us? It is incumbent upon us in this day and time that we study to show ourselves approved. Ourselves. It's time out for listening to what I simply have to say, for what the bishop just have to say. But we need to know God this day for ourselves like never before. You need, I need, we need a relationship with him. There's too much that he has invested in us for us to take this for granted. Our own lives, our own lives placed us as body, soul, and spirit. Our new lives through the redemptive work of Jesus Christ has now changed us to spirit, soul, and body. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. And because he is spirit, and now we are spirit, and we establish a relationship with him, no good thing will he withhold from them that walk upright before him. And if we delight ourselves in him, not charge us, not offer us, but give us the desires of our heart. The power of the spoken word. The power of the spoken word. What shall we say then? To these things we need to get back even now more so since school has started parents glory be to God now is the time for impartation to speak something over your sons and daughters lives to ensure that you have covered them and placed them in the hands of almighty God because if it worked then for Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, surely it should work for us. It worked for the New Testament church. They laid hands and imparted unto the people. What shall we say then? As now they're trying to teach in some places, there's no such thing as male or female. The devil is a liar. The word of God said he created them male and female, and God is not confused, so who is? Let God be true, and every man a liar. That is the word of the living God. What shall we say then? When the government declares you speak against a certain thing and they call it a hate crime, I'm telling you the truth and I'm telling it in love because I'm mandated by the word of God to speak the truth. It's forever 
settled in heaven. It's forever settled in heaven. Saints, we must get to the point now of setting aside all the confusion that has crept into our church. People are more focused on something right before their name, but rather than protecting their name, which should be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. But a reminder with that, that as much as it is written, that name can be What shall we say then? And what shall we say now? Is not God yet able? It is written, he's the same yesterday and forevermore. I am God and I change. So who has? When we don't see the miracle signs and wonders, who has? When we don't see the souls flooding the altar, who has? When we don't see devils crying out and running out, who has? If he hasn't, who has? What shall we say then? And even more so, what shall we say now? Again, chaos is here. Every attribute of it is now here in our homes and churches, every place you look, you will find it. So what do we do? What do we do? What do we say? How do we end this? Isaiah 43, 1 and 2, as I'm closing. But now, thus says the Lord that have created you, O Jacob, and he that formed you, O Israel, Fear not. Fear not, and you can include your name, <laughs> amen, instead of Israel. For I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, in other words, see, they didn't run from it. They went through it. Uh-huh. He said, I will be with you. And through the rivers, and they shall not do what? They shall not overflow you when you walk through the fire. Now, see, that's the other thing that we have to understand. We sing the song, I am a soldier in the army of the Lord. But see, in this walk, in this life, as a soldier of the army of the Lord, we don't run from the battle. We run to the battle. We are the first responders that God expects to move to, not from. Why? Because if you trust him, he said, you shall not be burned even in the midst of the fire. Neither shall the flame kindle upon you. And then when you know who you are, and you know that you have been redeemed, you know that a precious price has been paid for you.